In your experience, how has working on a federated setup at Netflix differed from what was a monolith at GitHub and Shopify, right? If you compare your experience, but both from like a platform team perspective, right, from your day-to-day job, but also from a developer working on the API, what are the trade-offs that sort of you make in each approach? Because I'm sure both of them, as always in engineering, right, it always depends, everything always depends, everything always has upsides and downsides. I'm curious, in your very practical experience, what has the upside been of having a federated approach at Netflix and what has the downside been? What have you lost compared to um, maybe the way people were building GraphQL at GitHub and Shopify? Yeah, I'll start with... Um... I guess initially right away, you can see how implementing schema-wide best practices, for example, gets harder when everybody has the freedom to build their own schema, right? So one thing I've always loved at GitHub is that to solve a particular problem, or if we had a tool that had the potential to solve a problem, well, you implement it in one code base that everybody owns um, and it solves it for everyone. So like you can have a lot of leverage in the same code base with federation and especially at Netflix, which is a culture of a lot of freedom, which is amazing. One of the reasons I joined uh, teams are, are fairly free to choose their technology and how to advance. It's a little harder though to get those conventions across the board. Uh, it requires more time. And since there's more freedom, yeah, it's just a little bit harder to implement tools across the board. Thankfully, having a gateway uh, at the center of things allows us to build tooling for like some cross-cutting concerns, but it's still not as simple as seeing the schema in a single place. You can make like large refactors easily. So that, that's one part of it. The second part of it, I think the big trade-off is like the operational complexity, like a gateway generating query plan, talking to hundreds of services is definitely more complex than a Ruby process executing a GraphQL query, right? If it was any other company, I'd be very worried since Netflix has such kind of a experience with, with, a, with that complex of an architecture. There's amazing observability that helps us debug kind of like anything going wrong with query execution. So... Yeah, that'd be the trade-off, I'd say. I've always said like the trade-off is operational complexity versus development complexity. It's very easy to contribute to a federated graph because it's your own service. You can go really quickly, but then it comes to an operational cost of like that whole query planning algorithm, the times out, timeouts, just like crossing network boundaries in general. So That really resonates. We actually see that at GraphCDN where GraphCDN kind of acts as like, a dumb gateway, in, dumb in, in, under air quotes, right, between your clients and your server. It's, it's meant to be as transparent as possible. But of course, what we've realized is that actually a lot of, actually federation actually has a lot of traction with bigger companies. And as soon as you introduce federation, everything becomes 10 times more complicated. Because of course, if individual services own their individual schema, then they also have to own their cache configuration in GraphCDN's case, right? And they have to own their analytics and they have to own all of that sort of completely separately. And actually GraphCDN wasn't really built with that in mind. And we're now starting to get into that world more and more and we're starting to add more functionality to, su to support federated APIs. But that's not something that was obvious to me from the get-go, right? It, it wasn't fr from the beginning. I was like, I just GraphQL, right? As, yeah. as long as we support GraphQL, surely it'll be just fine. But from a workflow perspective, as you said, from a developer experience perspective, it's much nicer. But from an operational perspective of, okay, how do we actually configure this gateway? You get a lot of overhead that I didn't anticipate before. It really goes back to like how big the product you're working on is. You know, so it really is just GraphQL for most products out there. You know, I wouldn't advise someone to go make a federated GraphQL when they're making their blog site or their intro tutorial. You know, like that's not something that you should do. Or if you're at a startup and you're you're not serving much traffic or your data model is not that complex or you're literally a team of like two people like none of this. These things, I think all these things were created because big ass teams started joining the space. The, the the GitHub's of the world, and I don't think people like a lot in big companies. Teams don't necessarily like to communicate that well with each other, so we <laughs> needed tooling and schemas to enforce like you know all of us to kind of follow the same conventions. So that's pretty cool that like even Apollo was part of schema stitching. They've kind of been through this whole journey of like where are, is enterprise GraphQL really going to go. Um, so it's cool to see that Netflix has that approach as well. Yeah, I mean, you you touched on a good point. I don't know where the line is where like federation starts becoming a good trade off. Right? I, I'm not sure where it is, but I think it's fairly high, right? Like even I'm not sure if we felt these problems of independent 
schema evolution at GitHub even with a very large schema, but you can get pretty far with good tooling. Personally, I try to delay the decision to federate yeah. as long as possible, but I don't I do think it's a valid solution when you get to a certain scale where if you're good enough at observability and maintaining your services, it it is a pretty ma magical solution that allows for like amazing freedom with a extremely large schema. So, yeah. I think that's also a lot of the large, the fun part of my job at Gracidian because we have, you know, thousands of customers. We see thousands of GraphQL APIs, right? And in fact, I, I was actually surprised by how low that threshold seems to be. I think pretty much every bigger company where bigger probably means more than maybe 100 engineers that we've talked to, I would actually say maybe it's even 100% or at least close to 100% uses federation, right? And I know obviously there's like Shopify and GitHub who both don't, but from the companies that we talk to, a lot of them nowadays use federation as soon as they have, basically as soon as they have more than five teams working on a GraphQL API. That's right? amazing. It's become yeah. sort of like the default solution from at least the APIs we see in the market where once you get to more multiple teams working on a GraphQL API, you're probably going to use federation. And what's also interesting is that, that there's people that I can't actually call out that I've talked to privately who, who were like, yeah, it's probably too early because actually the sort of centralized schema approach works up to a much larger point than people think, right back to your point, Mark, where you said, you know, at, at GitHub, that was still working perfectly fine. GitHub had the monolith, GitHub had the setup for it. At the time when we were there, I think there were, what, 600 engineers at GitHub, maybe? Some, somewhere in that Something order of like magnitude, that. I think. Yeah. And it was still working just fine. 